Okay, hello, it's uh, Justin Thorpe again here. I um, want to demonstrate a few ways or how the ring sizer in Matrix, pretty much any of the Matrix versions, how it works. Um, I've come across a few situations and just wanted to do a quick rundown, so this should not be a long video. Um, if you, I'm just going to pull out a few different examples of some rings. Got this ring. Um, I did and let's see I don't even know what size this is so I'm gonna just kind of a uh, check it might be like a let's try 10 and see no way too big it's probably more of a six got it and if I was to the ring sizer is an interesting thing it works pretty well and I like it but the main point I want to demonstrate is that if you use for example normally you take the ring you might select first your circle I'll put it in there and I'll now have to I can't just now size it so let's say I want to size it to a 14 I'm gonna say resize and it's gonna say hey you can't because I haven't put these angles in well, this is a band, so it's not going to work, really. So normally if the shank on the bottom is clear, you can put one there. It'll repeat it to the other side, symmetrical. I'm going to say resize, but watch what happens. Just let it take its time. And the result is interesting because if you look at it you'll see this pattern move this over so the pattern here is the sized ring here and if you look at it, the pattern there and as you come down the side and where we put those lines it starts stretching and it stretches and then goes back to normal okay so they're at the bottom of the ring where we put these two lines to size it it starts getting really stretched because it's pretty much telling the system um, it's pretty much saying hey from this point here to this point here in between here it's going to size um, that's where it's going to pull and stretch from as it goes up well that causes a problem obviously with this type of ring so that's that now we're gonna go into another sample here so that would be kinda like this type of ring where you have lots of stones you have that space on the bottom you can take the model put it in and that one's a size 6 and I'll even exaggerate and go up to 14 which is a crazy huge difference and I usually have my STL options at the maximum distance to edge here at 0 .002 and that's it so and I usually do not save to file I just like to have it come inside here so anyway I'll put in a new ring I usually will, I've always done it this way, I don't know what the correct way is, but I've always put it roughly where the girdle of the diamond is, and then I'll put those down here to give it that space for sizing, and resize. Although this ring rail is not a 6, so it'll just size it, but it'll be off by a size. Just wait kind of do more calculating this is built in pieces so it's gonna leave it in pieces another way to do it would be to remesh it first into a mesh and then do it so it's all one piece but let it do its little calculating as you can see up there and hopefully this doesn't take too long sometimes I've noticed when you have 
is you can see the symmetry lines on that T-spline. One of those surfaces is a T-spline. And for remeshing, it sometimes can cause problems. For this, we'll find out. Hopefully it doesn't cause any problems. Sometimes it'll delay it or make it take longer. And this one's taking a while. Just because it's, like I said, been it's in a bunch of pieces. All the prongs, everything. There we go, boom. So this one should have kept, and I don't have any holes, this is like before the ring's finished. And it was more for a render, that's why the prongs are already bent. But in this example you can see basically it'll keep everything, those stones although won't match up now they actually do fit and everything fits in there perfect and it just stretched that bottom section only and you can see that it's really stretched um, so instead of uh, diamonds going down three quarters of the way it's almost like only going down halfway since I stretched it so much but usually sizes don't go up that much and wouldn't really make that big of a difference so that works for that um, and that's usually how you, you, you'll do the rings and that works really great. The only difference is when you have rings like this one that I've made that has a square shank. So a square shank, let's see, let me get a, another ring rail out here. A six again. So we'll take this and just push it in there. This one again, we'll just do it somewhere around there. And if, since I have patterns on the inside too, I can only stretch it from there to there and watch what happens. There's like a 14. This one's already a mesh, so it goes faster. So see how it takes those corners and stretch that bottom? Well, the corners are now in the wrong spots. Uh, not going to work. So the only other way is to do it um, another way <laughs> and that is for example since I started using this ring rail and I pulled out that circle from that point on it's always going to ask you to put in all those terms and you have to use the sizer in this way as long as you're just sizing your regular rings knowing that the, with the where the stretch points will be and it doesn't matter then it's okay but if you need it to not stretch in those corners or a pattern then you have to never have put a circle in here when you first load up matrix then you can use it and I'll show you an example of that I'm gonna pause this and I'll show you an example of what I mean after I reload matrix and I'll use those same rings. Okay, I'm back and it's time to do this. Um, matrix loaded up. I have not used the sizer yet. So I'm gonna go and pull in some rings here. I'll do this first example. And normally, my, most of my rings, I will just scale them. Uh, when they're just a band like this and it changes the width but that way there's no change in anything but either way I'll show you in this example put it in here I'm gonna go back to maybe a size 14 extreme so you can see how off or not it is and you can put it in the model just don't put any of those circle or lines in there. Now just say resize and we'll see how off it is. This is why I scale it because sometimes it can still distort it in some areas but for most rings it won't matter. This one it probably does that's why I usually just scale it. But let's go analyze this. Um, get a shade mode and so the pattern here is good starting to stretch a little bit on those sides right there almost all the way around see that's why it has some stretching and then it starts going back to normal at the very top so actually 
spread the stretch out a lot further. Maybe if you had put lines at the very top, it would give more room to stretch, but then you still have one or two. So usually bands, eh, if you're gonna go a lot like this, I don't do it. I just um, 3D scale it up or down. It will make the thickness more or less. Um, you can always change the inner thickness if you needed to. Um, so it's a little bit more work, but comes out nicer in that way. Um, try the other ring. Um, well, we'll try this one to see just how it looks. Um, get my ring rail out there. This one looks like it's, uh, yeah, still there. Okay, I'm going to just put this one in and size it. I don't think I did this one on the other one, but, the, oops, didn't put it all in there. It's in pieces. It's going to size it in pieces. If you want it in one piece, you'll have to go up here to remesh and it'll be one solid piece and then you could do the ring sizer and it'll stay in one piece but this one might take a minute just because this band itself has lots of little surfaces and so it's going to take a little while probably should have remeshed it first if it takes too long, I'll cut part of this out. There we go. Now, as you can see, the top part's good. As it starts coming down, if we're comparing the two, you can already see that it's starting to stretch, starting to stretch a little bit, but it's kind of more of a uniform stretch, so everything caught instead of a square a little bit longer and as you get near the top it actually the very top is probably not even touched that very center and it just starts from that point on so that's why I 3d scale them when it's a band um, but as you can see it's a lot better than if you had put in those circles and marks so now let's try square shank. I'll go ahead and just keep using that six. Put in this band, and this time I'm not going to do anything, and I'm going to just resize it. And boom, compare the two. You got this time, see how it did not stretch the corners out at all? It looks really good. And center is not going to be touched. Now on the sides it'll start stretching it, um, so this pattern on the inside, if you look, that pattern compared to this one, in this case it doesn't probably matter much because the pattern is just how it is and the stretch doesn't look too bad. Um, there's no way to avoid that, but that stretch the wording got stretched a little but still doesn't look bad. Um, USA on the side still looks good. So in a case like this it prevented the corners from going way out and it's still usable. Um, so there we go. And I will do one, oh that, I think that's it, oh this one. Now I'm not even going to do this sample here because it doesn't really need it because it works with the other way and there would be no reason to do it the ring sizer in this way you would more than likely with this style have to do it with the circle and all that so anyway I hope this was helpful um, just remember as since this is matrix just loaded up I can do this and uh, with minimal stretching or more even stretching if needs be especially for the square shanks on rings but anything else uh, once you start sizing it that way from that point on 
the other way won't work unless you restart matrix so uh, just keep that in mind um, and hopefully that helps and is useful to someone that's frustrated with sizing rings inside a matrix um, thank you and that's it